so if you have hatred and unforgiveness, then get it out before your prayers are answered. Remember the Scripture says that let not the sun go down on your wrath. That means every day before sundown, be sure, be sure, be sure, not one root of bitterness remains. It may grow and poison the whole life and wreck your Christian life. Don't do it. Forgive in Jesus' name if you would be forgiven. If you want God to smile upon you and hear your prayers, then you must forgive. Or your sin piles up uncleansed and unforgiven. You must forgive if you would be forgiven. In the, I want you to remember that you can't have all the blessing God wants you to have, the freedom to call on God and the blessed answer to your prayers that you have a right to expect otherwise if sin, the wicked sin of unforgiveness, is in the way. I was in revival services at Huntington, West Virginia, in the East Huntington High School, with 20 churches cooperating in the revival campaign, and a pastor came to say, Brother Rice, will you pray about a problem in my church? He told me how two women who lived with one door between them on the same street, the most influential women in the church, how they had hatred and grudges and unforgiveness, and they didn't speak when they passed on the street. One comes in one door, he said, and sits on this side. The other in that door and sits on that side. And they never speak, he said. And the whole church was divided. He said that these good women had split the church and that for six years had been a curse and no results, had been little of salvation in the church. He asked me to pray, and we did pray. And I saw the time when those two women came to the platform after service one night, had their arms around each other, and one said, I want you to forgive me. I'm to blame for every bit of it. And the other woman said, No, no, I'm to blame. You must forgive me. And the pastor, pastor's wife had her arms around these two as well as she could, for they were rather large women. And the pastor stood to one side and cried and blew his nose and praised God. And I saw a revival break out in that end of town around that little church, and the plague was gone, and God answered prayer because here God's people had learned to forgive. If you want God to hear your prayers and to, to forgive you your, your sins and clean you up and, and let you day by day come to Him without a hindrance, then you must learn to forgive as you want to be forgiven. Again, let me bring you another message, another scripture that shows why our prayers are hindered. In Psalm 66, 18 is this plain word from the Bible. Will you listen very carefully? Psalm 66, 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. The Scripture does not say that if I have ever done wrong, God won't hear me. That would be tragedy unspeakable. That would mean the end of all opportunity to pray. God doesn't say that, thank God. But he says if I have, an, if I have a love for sin, if I regard sin, if I make an alibi, if I make excuses, if I take up for sin, if I hug it to my heart, if I... If I feel that way about sin, God will not hear me. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. What does that mean? Suppose we make this general rule. Any known sin, unlamented, unconfessed, unrepented, and unforsaken, any known sin can block your prayers and turn God's face away if you do not confess and forsake that sin. I do not know what it is. I just know, th know this that if you hold on to sin in your wicked heart, you have blocked the gateway to God as far as having prayers answered, as far as getting your loved ones saved, as far as having prosperity and blessing on your life. Oh, then, in God's dear name, I beg you, confess and forsake any known sin. What is it? I wish I could tell you. I can't. Is it some filthy habit that dishonors God? That maybe you say, oh, this little bit of a habit, it isn't so bad. Well, it may be no bigger than a pencil and a half as long. But if it has become an issue between you and God, because it defiles the temple of God, then it'll mean your prayers will go unanswered. Is it membership in some secret organization? I don't know. Is it some worldly amusement? I don't know. I don't know what it is, but if there's any known sin, a matter about which God has spoken to you and you didn't hear or would not listen, 
if there's any matter that has become a matter of controversy between you and God that will hinder your prayers. Any known sin, unconfessed and unlamented, any known sin, unforsaken, will mean that God cannot hear and cannot freely answer your prayers, however much he loves you and wants to do so. Will you check in your heart? It may be that it's robbing God. Maybe it's covetousness and you're under a curse, that covetousness which is idolatry. It may be that According to Proverbs 28, 9, the Scripture says, He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. Maybe your prayer is an abomination because you've turned your heart away from the Bible. You do not read the Bible. You do not gladly hear the Bible. You do not come with an open heart to the Bible to find what God says to you. If so, then your prayer is a failure and God turns his face away. Your prayer is an abomination. I do not know, but I say in it known sin. May the Lord help you by His Spirit to find that sin. If it's unconfessed, if it's unlamented, if it's unrepented, it's between you and God when you pray. And then someone says, but what is my trouble? It may be you've never even come to put your trust in Jesus Christ. Don't you know the Bible says that if any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be accursed? Don't you know that without Christ as a Savior, you cannot come to God acceptably in any matter? Why would God hear you pray when you reject His Son and turn down the only Savior? I beg you in Jesus' name to turn to Him first and make sure of your own salvation, and then you can pray for others. And wait, uh, let me give you a good, uh, a wonderful remedy for all of our prayerlessness and the lack of answer to our prayers. You turn in 1 John 1, 9, the Scripture says, If we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and sins and do cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What can I do when I fail God? What can I do when sin is hindered? This I may do, this you may do. You can confess that sin with an honest heart. And as you confess it, you'll help to kill it. You take sides against sin and for God, and God in His mercy forgives it and blots it out, and then God will make it so He can hear you gladly because you're on His side and against sin and for the right. Then confess your sin today and forsake it. Wouldn't it be blessed if everyone who sits and hears me now, if down in your heart you could say nothing between my soul and the Savior? Wouldn't it be blessed if you could say, The dearest idol I have known, Whatever that idol be, help me to tear it from thy throne and worship only thee. May God help you today that you'll say, there'll be nothing between me and God. I'll confess and forsake every known sin, and God will show me what's wrong, and God will help me to confess it, and I'll make right with others, and I'll make right with God. And then when I pray, God will smile into my heart and give me the answer that I so much need to my prayers. Don't forget the text now. Now, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither is his ear heavy that it cannot hear, but your iniquities are separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. But, again, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God help you to confess and forsake the sin that blocks heaven and shuts up the answer to your prayer. What is there between you and God today? Are you ready to lay it on the altar? If you will lay that sin on the altar and let God cleanse it away, then the road will be cleared for God to answer your prayers. I want Joanne and Jesse to come and sing this for you, and my daughter Grace at the piano. And as they sing it, you put your heart and everything in your life on the altar tonight, and God bless you as they sing it. Mm -hmm. 